My name is Jack Otto, and today I will be presenting my thesis, Computational Fluid Dynamics Analysis of a Membrane Tank Pressure Distribution as a Result of LNG Sloshing. First, there are some people I would like to thank. My advisor, Professor Onis, for his understanding and patience throughout this process. Professor Gulabeva, my reader. Professor Lutz, my editor. Brett Sharman, Chris Licato, and Ray Gagliardi for technical and logistical support throughout this process. Today, we will be going over the objectives of the thesis, background and theory, the computational fluid dynamics model creation process, results, conclusions, and finally, recommendations for future work. My objectives for this thesis are as follows. To determine impact pressures occurring at resonant and near-resonant excitation frequencies in membrane tanks. And to evaluate pressure distributions caused by LNG tank sloshing in simulated roll motion. Let's first understand a little bit about LNG. LNG is liquefied natural gas. It starts in the ground, where it's then drilled out and extracted, where it's brought to processing and liquefaction terminals before being loaded onto ships as LNG. It's shipped overseas to overseas markets in order to be vaporized and then burned for energy or thermal purposes. This thesis will be evaluating the shipping stage where sloshing can occur. LNG compresses at a rate of 600 to one, which means it's much more efficient to ship the liquefied version of natural gas or the gas version. It's a cryogenic liquid and it stays at a temperature of negative 160 degrees Celsius. Over 2,400 billion cubic feet of LNG are shipped per year. When burned, it has a 25% reduction in CO2 and a 75% reduction in NOx and SOx. The tanks are divided into a couple of different categories based on insulation, volumetric efficiency, and pressure ranges. Type A, or membrane tanks, are atmospheric tanks that have the most volumetric efficiency with good insulation. Type B, or MOS tanks, are spherical atmospheric tanks that optimize the surface area for minimal heat ingress. And type C are pressure vessels that utilize high pressures for storage. This thesis will be evaluating type A membrane tanks as they are the most commercially viable and being used today. Membrane tanks are designed by Gas, and Tech, or gas Transport and Technogas, and they utilize invar metal alloy uh, in panels in order to uh, minimize the thermal expansion. They have a max vapor pressure of 0 0.7 uh, bar gauge, and utilize perlite insulation to minimize heat ingress and boil off. Oil tankers utilize similar tanks. However, they include structures such as baffles to prevent damage from sloshing. But membrane tanks lack internal dampening structures due to the cryogenic temperatures. The figure here is the industry operational filaments for membrane tanks. It's a barred region in which you cannot operate when you're at that fill level. It's a restrictive operational range for below 5% and above 95%. It's a conservative range for safety purposes. It's very restrictive and can have massive impacts on economical uh, situations such as partial cargos. And it prevents damaging conditions from occurring in order to most improve safety. There has been previous work done on the sloshing issue in membrane tanks. The first of which was as a result of the El Paso Shipping Company finding sloshing damage due to resonant excitations in 1978. The sloshing club was quickly created and conducted experiments on sloshing loads. They did not evaluate resonants within their tanks and their research is not without bias as the company leading the research was the direct competitor to the creator of the membrane tanks. The next three were all done by GTT employees uh, who focus on the behavior of the fluid within the tanks and not so much the fluid st structure interaction. But the information has led to major breakthroughs in evaluating sloshing at critical excitation frequ frequencies instead of worst case environments. Seoul National University, in collaboration with GTT, created a six degree of freedom physical model with over 500 pressure points uh, to evaluate member membrane tank sloshing uh, in tanks that are being constructed. GTT is currently the main researcher of tank sloshing. However, the information is not public, and individual studies are done for individual ships as a commercial venture. However, research has shifted from worst case environments to critical wave periods. A web thesis, Clayton Newton, in 1999, 
looked at sloshing within oil tankers, and it was used as a resource for this thesis. Excitation is imparted on the tank through ship motions from environmental incident gravity waves. This can be caused by two different modes. Large amplitude ex excitation, such as hull slamming, seen in the bow slamming picture to the side, or as harmonic excitations from harmonic motions of the vessel. When there is an increase in the amplitude of motion, there is an increase in the severity of sloshing. Resonant sloshing occurs when tank motions or when ship motions match the LNG fundamental frequency. I focused on roll motions as a starting point. The fundamental frequency is a result of the fill height of the tank and the length of the tank in the direction of wave motion. Seen to the side are the fundamental frequency and fundamental periods in terms of tank fill height and length in the wave motion. For membrane tanks, there's a natural period of LNG that often ranges between seven and 15 seconds, which is close to the incident wave encounter frequencies or period. Seen here is a design wave spectrum that shows the design wave energy against the period of the wave. As it can be seen, the peak energy of the wave falls within the range of LNG sloshing. This means that the energy is transferred from those in incident waves in large uh, volumes to the fluid of the tank. It can occur as a standing wave, which is found at resonant frequencies, a hydraulic jump wave, which is found at low fills and resonant frequencies, a traveling wave, which are large amplitudes of motion and have high impact pressures, or a combination wave, which is a superposition of a standing and traveling wave and has the highest potential for damage to the tank. For this sloshing problem, there was two CFD methodologies used. Potential flow method, which utilizes Laplace's equation, and a fully viscous method, which utilizes the continuity equation and the Reynolds average Navier-Stokes equation, or RANS. Dynamic rigid boundaries were used to represent the tank and impart motions onto the fluid. This boundary condition were used as a basis for ship motions, which take har harmonic motions to find angular position and velocity, seen here as theta and theta dot t, where phi is the max amplitude, F is the frequency and T is a time step. These data points were calculated for each individual time step and inputted into XML files in order to be read into the CFD program. Rhino 6 was used to create the geometry in the mesh. The mesh was kept between 3 million and 4 million points after refinement to capture the pre-surface effect. The cells are a maximum of 2% of the length of the tank and the Dimensions were received from industry uh, for a Q-flex LNG vessel and are as follows. The height of 29.2 meters, a length of 47.1 meters, and a beam of 43.6 meters. In this table, you can see the sea state, or the condition of the environment in respect to wind, waves, and swell, and are prescribed to each fill level. The period for each pre prescribed sea state is shown in the column next to it. The sea state was assigned using the natural period for each fill compartment compared to the sea state peak periods. Using this, the five and 10% fill levels were removed from the simulations as the sea states of eight or higher are extremely rare, only occurring in about 1% of all scenarios. From the previous table, I was able to create a test matrix. Shown here with the name of the test, the fill level, the test frequency, the ship motion mode, and the amplitude of ship motion. Each fill level has five tests, ranging from 90% to 110% of the resonant frequency with 5% increments. This was done to see the effect of frequency on sloshing. The red cells uh, signify a flawed setup. An example, the 20%, I left the XML files open and therefore Samaris did not read them and the tank stayed still for the entire test. Residual drop in Samaris is used to show the convergence of the model. Seen here is the velocity, pressure, turbulent energy, and energy dissipation uh, in the test, which all show that they're converging as they flatten out. Now to show you what it actually looks like. We have a few animations here, and we're going to start with a 50% fill level, a resonant excitation frequency, which is a frequency of 0.118 hertz, or a period of 8.448 seconds. And so as can be seen here, the pink is the LNG and the blue is the vapor. 
any other colors or mixture within that cell. You can see large amplitude excitations starting with a basic wave. And as it grows, it becomes more and more violent, resulting in high impact pressures. This only took about 16 hours to run, uh, but compared to my next one, uh, it, was, it was quite easy because this one was 36 hours. And as can be seen, you will see large impact pressures when the wave crashes against it. Noticeably, you can see gas entrainment within volumetric one and find higher pressures within those gas regions uh, from the pressure animation. Also should be noted is the negative pressure caused by local vacuums uh, due to sloshing. Shown here is a pressure versus time graph for the average pressure on vertical walls. The blue line, the blue dotted line, is a DNV limit for dangerous pressures, and the orange is a potentially dangerous uh, DNV limit. The data is shown as points and is a combination of hydrostatic and impact pressures, with impact pressures far exceeding the limits. This next graph is a zoomed in portion of that same graph showing uh, the impact pressures and how high they jump up in short time periods. This table shows the maximum pressure in the form of percent exceedance found in each run at the same fill height in each row. They are tested at resonant and near resonant frequencies, and it shows the more fill the tank gets, the higher the pressure gets. It is interesting to note that in all for one, well, for one case, the resonant frequencies have lower values than the near resonant frequencies. As you can see, the, the dangerous or barred fill area is all red as it shows uh, the pressure limits were exceeded. These two tables show the number of times in each run that pressure exceeded potentially dangerous limits as shown on the one on the left or exceeded the dangerous limit as shown on the one on the right. Like with the max pressures, the number increases as fill height increases and the highest number of limit exceedances is found at near resonant frequencies. In conclusion, the model successfully found impact pressures in roll motion. Impact pressures far exceeded limits consistent with recommendations. The 50% fill level was almost five times the recommended limit. Near resonant test frequencies generally have higher impact pressures and total instances as shown by the results. And finally, the program I use, Samaric MP Plus, does not have sufficient post-processing for sloshing analysis. This was due to me having to use the time averaged or the, the, the averaged pressures over the vertical wall instead of a point by point instance. So now for recommendations for future, future work. A continuation of testing in pitch, yaw, heave, surge, or sway, or any combinations of, of them. The addition of boil off to the model, which would result in a changing level uh, over the period of time. Utilizing FEA to find the structural integrity of the model with the collected data. Uh, using a multi-tank model with real ship data and motions. Finally, I would like to uh, invite Rich, Tim, and Coda back up to answer any questions.